one warm afternoon, Edward was shunting trucks when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Good afternoon, sir, said Edward, slightly out of breath. Ah, Edward, I've received a letter from a controller from other railway asking me if I could lend him an engine to work his short branch line, while that line's engine is under repair here on Sordor. Would you like to do this, Edward? Oh, yes, please, sir. Good, good. You all set off in the morning and don't look after your jobs while you're away. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other railway, Jim, an engine even older than Edward, clanked loudly along his branch line with his three coaches Lucy, Alice, Barbara, along with Bernard the brake van. Jim struggled on till he stopped suddenly. You've run out of steam, old boy. We'll have to wait here till you've enough steam to continue on. The passengers made unkind comments about the railway. After a few minutes, Jim was then ready to give it one last effort. He finally got underway again. And rounded the bend into the junction at the big station. Oh, late as always. <sighs> You'll be old one day. Look here, Jim. So top of map, the control of the North Western Railway is sending an engine to work the line while you're away being overhauled. Then you'll feel as good as new. Jim really looked forward to that day. Edward set off early the next morning and made good time. He arrived at the junction and puffed onto the branch line making his way to the sheds. Soon Edward arrived at some lovely peaceful station. There was Jim being prepared for his service. Hello, you must be Edward. I'm glad you're here. I'm really in need of an overhaul. Before Edward could reply, the railway's controller arrived. Oh Edward, you will work with Jim today and learn the line and his jobs. Jolly good, wonderful. So for the rest of the day, Edward and Jim worked the line together. Jim was ever so pleased his trains were on the time of day, so no comments were made from the mainline engines. Last trip, Jim was uncoupled and left for the works. Edward set off back down the line and set off down to work. Hi Edward, I hope you're enjoying your stay here. Yes sir, I am very much. Excellent. Tonight I need you to take a special train of old wagons to the scrapyard. No problem. It'll be nice to see some new views. Oh, you be careful, warned the coaches as Edward shunted them away. It's only a scrapyard, but locomotives don't come back. Not if they're steam. They take old engines away and replace them with them new diesels. Scrapyards do have old engines in them, like me. Old engines that are redundant for the jobs they were built for. Yes, but these are young engines. Some have only worked for seven years in service or less. They say managers want to eliminate steam and replace them with diesels. I'll be fine. I'm a Northwestern Railway engine. My controller likes steam engines. Well, we did warn you, said the coaches darkly. As night fell, Edward did ask his driver about the scrapyards. Driver, is it really true steam engines are being replaced with diesels? Ah. Uh, I'm sorry, old boy, but it's true. Branch lines like this one are being closed down and steam is being withdrawn en masse. Edward felt very sad. The 
and stood in lines, cold, forgotten, with tears running down their faces, wondering who would be next in line to be cut up, as you don't stay long in the scrapyard, you soon get cut up and replaced with another steam engine, a large diesel locomotive, drifted silently out of one of the warehouses. No, 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 I won't go. No, you can't make me. Fuel time is up, old Ketsu. The diesel then started to drag the steam locomotive into the shed, with sparks and lights flashing all around him. No, 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 you can't. You, please, 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 you can't do this. I'm, I'm still a useful engine. was silent. The engines were too afraid even to shed a tear for their friend. A few moments later Edward arrived with the two wagons. Before they send another one before it's too late, quickly go! 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 Please go! Silent. Well, well, well. What's this fresh scrap has just come steaming into my yard? I am not scrap. I am delivering these wagons for you. Now be a good engine and shunt them away, will you? You can't talk to me like that little kettle. I can. If you don't treat these locusts with respect, as one day you'll end up in here being scrapped when you're of no more use to anyone. Diesel the de was silent and shunted the trucks away. I'm terribly sorry about what's happening to you. I truly am. No matter. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Edward, with a tear in his eyes, but very sadly hung. One morning, as Edward arrived at the junction station, he noticed a van for him in the sidings. What's that for? he asked the station master. Oh, provisions for the shop. Heavy snowfall is forecast tonight. The shop has ordered extra supplies in case your branch line is blocked by snow. Edward shivered. He didn't like cold on his... Oh, silly soft stuff. I'd whoosh it away. A tank engine on Sodor once said that, and he got stuck, and he was then rescued by a tractor. Rubbish! You northwestern engines aren't used to hard work. You're always posing for paintings for the railway series. You just treat snow with respect, or you'll get stuck. The next morning, as Sid and Charlie made their way to the pub, the first snowflakes began to fall. The next morning, as Edward awoke, there was snow all around him. Oh, bother, there's no snow plough. You could use me, sir. Just fashion some metal to my front and use me as a snow plough. Are you sure? Yes, I'll be all right. So the driver did just this. Once all was ready, they slowly worked the train up the line to the junction station. They ran spot on time, but when they arrived there was no sign of the express train. The passengers did grumble. Luckily the station tea rooms was open, and once the hot chocolate started to flow, the passengers didn't mind. Sorry Edward, no mainline trains today. One got stuck in a snowdrift up the line last night. I say, I do you think you could use Berlin to clear the line and bring the stranded train back? We're willing to give it a go, my dear. So once Edward was ready and Bernard was coupled to the front of him, he set off down the line. Snow was heavy and sometimes Edward needed to step back and charge at the snowdrifts. At last Edward met the guard of the stranded train. He slowly moved forwards but he was shocked at the sight of the train which had nearly been covered in snow. After much work 
and lots of steam heat, the snow started to clear, and with a tremendous effort, Edward started to move the mainline train, slipping wildly at times. Steady, old boy. That's it, you've got it, Edward. Well done, you've got it, Edward. Edward just didn't have enough steam to reply, but at last he made it back to the junction station. Edward ran round the train and pulled up next to the mainline engine. Silly, soft stuff, I'd whoosh it away. <coughs> yes, um, well, I guess you're right after all. You just treat snow with respect or you'll get stuck. Try to remember that bit of useful advice. Over on Sodor, the fat controller was talking to Jim outside the works. Eee, Jim, how are you feeling? Better than ever. I've never felt so good in my life, sir. Well, but b b before you go home, I think it's worth you doing some test runs to make sure everything's working as it should. Would you like to play with some trucks, Jim? Oh yes, sir. I'd be glad to stretch my wheels. Once Jim was oiled and steam pressure was up, he set off to the shunting yards. Ouch! 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 said the trucks as Jim shunted them. Then Gordon arrived to collect his coaches for the express. Goodness me! Has Sir Topham Hatt really replaced a museum piece with another? You little engine make Edward look possibly brand new! Oh, be quiet. At least my class can do more than just pull silly express coaches. Well, I never! Gordon was taken aback. He was not used to being spoken to like that by such a little engine. I remember a story my driver told to me about an engine that was rude, and this is what happened to him. So this is the story that Jim told. In a small dark shed, on a very short branch line, which is near a very quiet town, with a very good bus service, good local road connections, hardly seems worth running a railway service, anyway, lives Ted, an old engine who is absolutely fed up of being woken up at such an unsociable hour every morning by his driver and fireman, who would both much rather have a decent engine than old rust bucket like Ted. They lit his fire and oiled his motion, though sometimes he wished they would be late so he could have a longer sleep. Once his driver and fireman had made a cup of tea, the first of many that day. Ted would move over to the sidings to collect his coaches, or chicken sheds as he called them. They were old four-wheeled coaches which were falling apart. They would much rather be nice bungalows than have passengers banging their doors with no respect whatsoever for them. After his driver and fireman had yet another cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit, the guard would tell them to get a move on or they would be late for the intercity service at the slightly bigger station down the line. So they set off down the line, or up the line depending on where you're standing. Ted hated the smell of the countryside, especially when the farmer had been muck spreading. As Ted was the only engine on the line, he did sometimes have a slightly pompous personality. Do hurry up, do hurry up, said the coaches. Oh, be quiet, you old coaches, or I'll shunt you to the scrapyard where you're long overdue. At the slightly bigger station, fast trains flash by on the main line. Show offs, said Ted. Later on, Ted was sleeping in the bay platform. He was awoken by two train spotters that were taking his name and number. Be off with you, hissed Ted. Let me sleep in peace. As Ted's driver and fireman were having a relaxing cup of tea, an intercity HST pulled up on the opposite platform. How's the chicken shed express? said the HST. You can have them if you want. Oh, I'd rather have my nice air-conditioned coaches, said the HST. I'd rather go back to my shed than pull your fat cat express. Tell your passengers to hurry up, said Ted angrily. Seems someone's in a slightly bad mood. I'm fed up with these two drinking tea all day and having to be coupled up to these out-of-date, clapped-out wooden bungalows on wheels. You know, in the big city, people would call your coaches retro items. The HST receives the guard's right-of-way and pulls out of the station. Hmm. Retro items, thought Ted. 
with a glint in his smoke box. Later that day, Ted was breaking the speed limit down his branch line and also dreaming of a new padlock for his shed so he would not get disturbed anymore. After all, he was feeling quite pleased with himself as he'd met a gentleman at the station who was looking to build a beach hut for the summer and Ted being Ted, struck up a deal with the gentleman. As Ted backed down into his shed, he looked over at his smart new coaches as his old coaches are now serving a most useful role as beach huts. Ted settled down to sleep, but within a few weeks his line would be closed and turned into a bypass. Ted would be sent to a scrapyard where he would slowly rust away in peace. A truck of bunting and party decorations had arrived and Miss Rolops had done a wonderful spread in the station refreshment rooms. Edward was kept busy pulling passenger trains all day as the local bus service wasn't running due to floods after a heavy rain the night before. No matter, Edward said to himself, I like being busy. Later that day, a special train had been arranged to take passengers to the junction to welcome home Jim. The coaches insisted on being cleaned and Bernard had his lamps polished. Edward too was cleaned for the occasion, coupled up to his coaches filled with passengers and they set off to the junction. Miss Rolox had given the guard instructions to make sure her ice buns were secured on the journey. Edward made good time, but unknown to him, Daisy, a temperamental cow at the best of times, had broken a fence and was stood in the middle of the track. When Edward saw Daisy, he applied his brakes. Mrs. Rolops' ice buns went everywhere, but Edward just stopped in time. Oh, on, Luckily, Farmer Turnips was on the train and put Daisy back in the field with Hector, though Hector wished he was with Hercules, who was in the opposite field. Then Edward set off again. Oh, you made us late, you frightful animal, the coaches said to Daisy, who mood rudely at them. Edward made it to the junction station just a little late. We thought you'd gotten lost. No, it was just a cow on the... Yeah, speaking of cows, mate, Mrs Rolops' ice buns have gone everywhere all over my brake van. Then a familiar whistle was heard. Passengers turned and cheered as Jim pulled into view. He negotiated the points and was then back onto his own branch line. Be welcome on, Jimmy. Good to see you back, like. Thank you, sir. It is good to be back. And thank you too, Edward, for looking after my branch line. Oh, it's been a wonderful time. After photos were taken of the two engines, all the passengers were back on. Oh, I've missed this line. Your railway's ever so nice. The steam engines there are treated with utmost respect. Yes, they are. Some could be a bit puffed up in the smoke box, though. Did you meet Gordon? Oh yeah, I did. Did you meet Scott? Oh yes, I got him out of a nasty snowdrift. At last they made it home, and after Edward had shunted the coaches away, the crews enjoyed a splendid fish and chip supper in the station refreshment rooms. After supper, Edward set off back home to Sodor, whistling goodbye to Jim as he went. Jim noticed Miss Rolops giving the guard a good talking to after ruining her ice buns. Hey, what are you doing? You're smiling my ice buns like you know, it's me, just making them out. Could you do, could you do that, you know, of all the ingredients that bought? Oh, how could you? Oh, you nasty man. He was happy to be back home and back in his own shed too. After a while, he fell happily to sleep.